Good morning. Hope all is well. Praying that everybody be safe and blessed on this good Sunday. Well, today's topic is God's greater glory. As Christian believers, our ultimate goal should be God's greater glory. No matter if we have what we need or what we want, we should always be willing to give God praise no matter what situation we're in because we have to realize that everything that we have, God gave it to us. Everything belongs to him and we should be willing to give those things back to God. Amen. God gives and he takes away. When he do give, we should be joyful and when he takes away, we should be joyful giving God praise and whatever situation it is. And when God does these things, he breaks us. He breaks us in order to position us, to promote us, and to put us in our rightful place. It's not to destroy us. Amen. So we have to give God glory for whatever it is that he's doing for us. Amen. So it's only by God's grace that we're still standing in a ways. But before I get into this word, let me say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for strength. Thank you for your love and tender mercies and care. Father God, I ask that you forgive us for anything that we have done out of your will in Jesus' name. Lord God, just take your place, Lord God, and may the people get the word that you intend for them to get it made this way reach all of those that is intended for in jesus mighty name i decree and declare this done you all <clears throat> god's greater glory <clears throat> the other night <clears throat> i had a dream about a girl getting married and she had on this white wedding dress well first of all let me start by saying the lord woke me up at 2 22 the other morning on the same day i had this dream so i screenshot it that he woke me up to at 222 he he just been showing me the 222 for a lot, for over two probably three weeks now and he woke me up at 222 the same day i had this dream so i screenshot it and i'm gonna uh, put it as probably as a thumbnail or something so that y'all can see but <laughs> he just confirmed to somebody you are going to get married you are going to have a baby but now i had a dream that same day about a girl wearing a wedding dress and at the same time she was uh pregnant and so she had on these black and white joys with her white wedding dress or whatever and so you know i looked up everything and <clears throat> and uh, I always start with the color of the scene and everything. So I looked up black because the shoes was black and white. So I looked up black. It means lack, like you're in lack of something. And he led me to Jeremiah 8, 21 and 22. It says, for the hurt of a daughter of my people and my hurt, I am black. Astonish had taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not their health for my people and daughter <clears throat> and uh, my daughter people recovered? Look, uh, the Lord is saying somebody um, may be born with an issue to where they may be barren or some type of birth defect to where you wishing that you um, <clears throat> wasn't born that way. But God is saying, you know, just because you was born a certain way. There's no reason for you to, you know, be upset with him because he gives and he take away. But what you have to do is line up with God's will. And the first thing that uh, he told me is to talk about rebellion just because, like, when we don't get things that we want or what, you know, what we need, we tend to get mad at God and start rebelling against him. But he said rebelling against him is the last thing you should do. When you don't, when you want God to do something for you, you should draw near to God. You should draw closer to God. Amen. He said there is no healing physical or spiritual for a person with intentions on rebelling against God. So therefore, you're going to have to draw near to God. Begin to start building you a closer relationship with God when you want him to do something for you and move on your behalf. And then I looked up the color white. It says pure unblemished, spotless, and truth. You're going to have to be able to stand the truth about whatever is happening. Stop having self-pity and stop doubting and complaining. Stop doing it. You have to be able to uh, accept the truth. He led me to Revelations 19, 8, and it says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is for the righteous of the saints. And then he says to consecrate yourself, purify yourself in order for God to, you know, bless you in order for God to move and do that thing that you want God to do. He says to stop drinking and smoking and watch your eating habits and start fasting because I think somebody is barren or you think that you're barren and God want you want to have a baby. But God said you will have that baby. Amen. Because the woman was pregnant. She was having a baby. God said you will have that baby. But in order so you can be able to produce 
you're going to have to stop drinking and stop smoking. And just by doing things on your own will, you can't do that just because that's what makes you happy. You got to do what God telling you to do. It says a form of purity is being able to be honest with yourself without having self-pity and accept the truth without being upset and angry about it. You're going to have to stop being upset and angry with God by choices you make and decisions you make. Amen. God says, you are going to get married. And I looked up marriage and it meant covenant, agreement, and joined. And he led me to Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 31 and 32. It says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Therefore, you need to build you a good relationship with God. You need to start going to church, find you a church home. Amen. It says what God is saying, that you're asking him to bless you with a baby before marriage. Somebody is asking God to bless you with a baby um, before you get married. And you ask God, asking God to bless you with a baby out of somebody else's marriage or why you is married. God said he's not going to do that because that's uh, contrary to his will. And the Bible tells us do not tempt the Lord thy God. And that is tempting God. And not only is someone asking God to bless you with a baby out of wedlock or, you know, uh, while you're not married, God is saying that it's other people's on here that's riding around on fictitious tags and y'all asking God to cover y'all when he gave you the money to provide the, and get the things that you need. But yet you feel like like you're going to need the money for something else. God said, don't worry about this. Something else, he's going to cover that too. But you can't ask him to cover you while you're doing illegal and fictitious things. God said, do not tempt the Lord thy God. He led me to Matthew 4, 5, and 7. It says, then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And their hands shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to them, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So y'all going to have to stop asking God to do things that's contrary to his will and expecting God to move on your behalf. You're going to have to line up with God's will. We're supposed to follow after God, not God following after us. You're going to have to learn how to obey God's statutes, his commandment, and his uh, um his judgments. So stop asking God to do illegal things. That's everything that's co contradictory to his word. He cannot be who you asking him to be. You're going to have to be who God is asking you to be. Amen. God wants you to go to church. He wants you to start building a relationship with him. So when you do have this child, you can give that child back to the Lord and you can raise that child up in church and be able to give that ch child godly counsel. Amen. So whatever it is that you believe in God for and want God to do, you're going to have to do what it is. And you may look at other people's life and just uh, and say, well, they had kids that I will like God bless them and stuff like that with children and stuff covered other people in their messes but guess what somebody prayed for you somebody prayed over you and they want the best for you so it's only uh derived from somebody else's prayer that you're being protected this is god protection god rejection is god protection always remember that when god rejects you in a certain area of your life he's protecting you for something he don't want you to end up being a single mother or a single father he don't want you divorced god don't want you in bad situations amen but that lady she was uh married <clears throat> or whatever she was getting married and she was pregnant at the same time and God was telling me just as soon as you decide to do the first thing he tell you to do do things in order how he want them to do you're gonna see a change in your situation immediately he said you're gonna see a change and then he led me to um first Samuel 1 11 and it says and she vowed a vow and said O Lord of hosts if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy maid servant and remember me and not forget thy maid servant, but wilt give unto thy handmaid a man child, and I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And shall no razor come up on his head. This was Hannah. Hannah was a barren uh, woman in First Samuel. You can go read the story. But she was a barren woman or whatever. And she couldn't conceive. But she had a sister wife named Panina. Panina always, you know, used to mess with her. Because Panina could bear children. But Hannah got to the point to where she remembered God. She remembered who her God was. And she humbled herself. And went and prayed to God and asked God for that child. And she was dedicating that child back to God. Meaning giving that child back to God. Raising them up in 
praying under godly counsel. And so therefore you're going to have to go to God and you're going to have to pray and remember who God is instead of rebelling and get mad at God because you're buried. No, go to God humbly and pray and ask God to give you a child and tell God exactly what you want because she said a male child. She told God exactly what child she wanted, a girl or a boy. And God did that for her. Amen. But 12 says that, and it came to pass as she continued praying for the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. So not only do you going to have to keep praying and asking God for that thing. You're going to have to continue a relationship and continue to ask God to cover you and uh, bless you with whatever you believe in God for. And I wrote down, it says, <clears throat> when you pray, dedicate that child to the Lord. You can raise the child up in Christ, going to church and training him to have a relationship with God. But in the end is that child's decision to accept Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. <clears throat> you just got to do your part. But in order for you to encourage and to teach your child to serve the Lord and to love him, you're going to have to have a church home. You're going to have to have a good and steady relationship with God. So start praying and fasting more and reading your Bible. Then you will know exactly what it is that God expects of you. And he will do what it is that you're asking him to do. And it says to pour out your heart before God. It says, God is going to give you according to your heart's desires. And Hannah name mean grace. Hannah name uh, meant grace. And she named her son Samuel, the one she had asked God for. And she dedicate, dedicated back to God. And it says, God has heard. So God has heard your prayer. And he has given you grace in the area of bearing. And that not only dealing with children or, you know, conceiving a child, but in other areas of your life, you wouldn't be bearing. And whatever you're asking God for, you dedicate it back to God. You give God back what he give you. Amen. <clears throat> our, um, uh, our greater glory is God's grace. Amen. The goal is God's greater glory. Amen. So give back to God what he's given you. Uh, anyways, uh, he led me to Psalms 10, 3. It says, for the wicked boast of his heart's desires. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. And I wrote this down. It says, the wicked offer praise, but not to the Lord. Rather, their hearts offer praise and worship to their own greedy desires. You mean that you're going to do what you want to do. You're not going to line up with God. Will you're going to rebel against him and expect God to still move on your behalf. And you giving glory and praise to that thing that you want, whether it's in your eating when God say, you know, go on a fast, whether it's your eating, whether it's your smoking and your drinking that you want to do, you give praise to that instead of um, praises to God. You do things to please yourself instead of things to please God. And then he led me to Psalms 10, 17, and it says, Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. So one thing about it, in order for God to hear you, you're going to have to humble yourself and do things God way. Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord. And it says, you will prepare their hearts and you will cause the, your ear to hear. So in order for God to hear you, you're going to have to humble yourself. And he led me to Proverbs 5, 15. It says, drink water from your own cistern and run in water from your own well. Therefore, this is talking about adultery. Do not be messing with nobody's husband or wife and think God is going to bless you in somebody else's marriage. He's not going to do that. God is calling people. If you're cheating on your spouse, God is calling you to marital fidelity. Amen. He says, God is calling you out of adultery. He says, do not be a side piece. Get your own husband or get your own wife. If you are already married, stop cheating. Proverbs 5.21 says, For the ways of a man are before the uh, eyes of the Lord, and he ponders the past. So God see you, whether you praying, whether you not doing what you're supposed to do or not, God still see you in whatever mess you in. And he says that his own iniquities entrap the wicked man, and he is caught in the course of his sin. So therefore, you're going to get caught doing what it is, whatever it is that you're trying to sneak and do. Amen. And he says, He shall die for lack of instruction spiritually. Spiritually, you're going to die for lack of instruction because I'm giving you the instruction now. It's up to you to follow them. Amen. And it says, and in his greatness, his folly shall go, uh, uh, in his folly, he shall go astray. So therefore, you continue on doing whatever it is and rebelling against yeah. God. And you're going to get caught up in it. Amen. So therefore, to the woman who's barren, to the woman who feel like she can't help kids, or the man who feel like he can't help kids, or to the person who feel like you can't go further in your life, you've been working hard and trying to do things, look, 
Give whatever it is to God, whether it's your education, whether it's your career, whether you want to have a baby, whether it's a marriage. Dedicate that stuff back to God because our goal is God's greater glory, not your own. And do not rebel against God. That's the last thing. Get you a deeper relationship with God instead of running away from him. Run to him. Amen. God's greater glory. Well, you all, that's all the word that I have for you today. Do things right. Stop riding around on them fictitious tags. Line up with God's will. Go to church. Do things according to how God wants you to do it. And watch God bless you. He said the very first day that you start, you begin doing what he say do. You're going to see a change in your situation. Well, you all, I pray that this word added to you. Remember that the Lord loves you. And God bless.